Give us an update on the quarterback situation. Um, it's going to sound really boring, but they're, they're both playing really good. You guys just saw you, you guys just saw both of them make some really good plays in that last drill, and uh, it's what practice has been like all through camp. They're both good players, and uh, haven't decided yet what we're going to do. Do you expect to take this all the way up to game time or game week? Uh, I, I don't know. I, we're, it's a daily conversation. We, you know, um, we. I would like to. I would like to do something. I don't want to take it all the way to game time, but um, we do have some practice time left, and I. I feel like both of them are prepared. They both had enough reps in camp that they could play in a game, and um, so we're working our way through it still. Is there a chance you could use both both quarterbacks in the opener? I'd prefer not to do that, but there's always a chance. Have there been has there been separation at number three? Because we've seen those guys get some reps too. Um, I would say that's really close too. You know, Trayson has a big advantage of just knowing the offense better than McKay, and McKay gets better every day. He, McKay's a super athlete. Um, so, and then unfortunately though, those two haven't had enough reps because we've been, we've invested so much in Gary and Jake. They uh, we, they haven't had enough reps for me to say definitively who's ahead there. Where have uh, Gary and Jake made the biggest progress from day one at camp? Well, with Gary, it's just uh, um, knowing our offense better. You know, in spring ball, he was just learning it for the first time, and now he's starting to operate like a veteran. And um, with Jake, it's just uh, you know, last year just eliminating those critical mistakes. You know, he's a playmaker. Um, he moves the team, and we've been trying to just eliminate those critical errors, and he's he's done a good job of that. He, it's taken very good care of the ball in spring ball and through fall camp. We saw it a couple of times in camp that the starter will emerge. You just see it on the field. The team, yeah. Will know. What does that look like? Is that explosive <laughs> plays? Is it, I mean, what, when will you know? In, in um, yeah, it's a combination of things. It's you know just someone who just moves the team and scores touchdowns. And um, and I was hopeful that that would be more clear than it is by now, um, but I think. It, it's been a matter of both of them playing well, not that neither one of them has seized the day, you know, seized the job. So we'll keep working our way through it a little bit longer. So do you not expect to go this far in the camp without having a guy clearly uh, I, I hope that it wouldn't, but I, I, um, I'm not surprised, and I've been through this before where it's been close like this. You know, Zach and Jaron, a similar deal with those two, um, had a similar deal with Zach and, and uh, Tanner Mangum that one year, um, then had – pretty close deal with Jaron and Baylor you know so those all, all of those went all the way up to game week on the scrimmage Saturday did either of the starting quarterback candidates play better than the other or how would you assess it um and we played a lot of snaps we played 100 over 100 snaps I think it was uh like 120 snaps um including the special teams plays and but so, so much of it was situational that it's it was, it's hard to say like you know, one guy did better than another in one drill. Another guy didn't because we did, like, red zone, two-minute. We did some drive. It's up and down the field. A lot of it depends on which O-line you have in because we, we had our start. We pulled our starting O-line about halfway through. Um, so I, I can't answer that, really. What's the running back up chart looking like these days? Uh, LJ looks great. Looks really good, man. Um, and Folau is playing really good. I think you're, you're going to see those two guys a lot. And Miles Davis is is um, is a good player who you'll see. And um, Pokai is he's a freshman. He's he's a good player too. I love love all four of those guys. But um, it's it's nice seeing LJ and Folau. I feel like those two guys are um, this is kind of their time. You know. You noted coming out of spring that Jake had a, a clean no interceptions in spring. Does that still maintain itself in fall? I think he's had one in fall camp. I can't remember. Um, it's a lot more practices in fall camp, a lot more pass attempts. And uh, I think it's one or two. Yeah, and he's, he's done a good job taking care of the ball. Who, who's a, you know, how they should Gary and Jake in terms of stretching, the, stretching down the field and deep ball passes? Um, sorry, I don't really want to answer that one just because for competitive advantage reasons, yeah, okay. yeah. Thanks, Aaron. When you look at the yeah. offensive line, How's that shaped out with the right guard spot? Is that, have you got any clarity there with Leos? It's not team? final yet. Moccasini and Leos are competing there, and uh, but it's I would say it's pretty clearly down to those two now. We had a couple other candidates that we thought might be in that mix. It's it's going to be one of those two guys. And when it comes to the final decision at quarterback, does Kalani just give you that autonomy where it's your your call, uh, or does 
Do you have to go to Kalani and give that final sign off? I'll run it through him. He's he's pretty great about giving, uh, you know, trusting his coaches to do their jobs. And that goes for everybody. You know, he trusts all the coaches to play who they think is best for the job. And but I will definitely be talking to him. We talk about it every single day. And I will, I'll talk to him. I'll talk to Jay Hill. I'll talk to Fessy. My whole staff on offense. It's. I'll, I'll gather information from everyone and then but yeah the ultimate decision will be on my shoulders and I'm, I'm good with that I'm used to this are you seeing this this team still unified regardless of who the guy is yeah yeah this this is a really close team this is the this is uh you know we we haven't won a game yet but I feel like feel like we have a close-knit group here more so than more so that definitely more so than we had a year ago on the offensive, on the offensive line uh, there, going going back to that. How deep do you feel comfortable? I guess playing with this rotation, not even necessarily like names and whatnot, but how many guys do you feel like you've got kind of in that top rotating group? Well, we have. Prob- I would say probably I might forget somebody, but uh, about eight. We have about eight guys, you know, which is which is good. You know, eight's a lot. We have six that we feel really good about right now, and two more that I think are really coming along. And I might be forgetting someone, but. We'll be okay there. I, this, that group is, I think they're pretty uh, determined to play well this year. I think that's about where you've been the last several years, that seven, eight, nine rings. Yeah. As far as the tight end room, Keanu, Ethan Erickson, um, Reiner Swanson, how's that room coming? Good. Tava. Tava's a good player. He's really doing a good job. Yeah, Keanu, uh, Tava, and uh, Ethan have all been playing really well. Reiner is a super athlete. And we're bringing him along. Um, who am I forgetting there? Uh, Ray, Ray, Ray Ballo, he's doing a good job. And uh, Mason Fakahua is doing a good job. So those guys, and all those guys, that whole group right there you just heard about will be involved this year. They'll all be involved in various ways. Have you got the uh, introduced the offense to Southern Illinois' defense at all yet, or is that going to be later this week? We did it for the first time today. It was just a, it was just a 10-minute period, but, yeah, we for the first time today.